Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena and I bring you today's word for August 16, 2016. Now, all year long, I've been teaching a series entitled Refine Focus, and I believe it's absolutely critical that we maintain our focus, not just in this season, but for the rest of our lives so that we can become the men and women God has called us to be, so that we can walk in our divine purpose, so that we can maximize our purpose and potential while we're in the land of the living. Now, we've been studying uh, the parable of the sower for months now, and for a few weeks, we've been looking at this rocky ground, and I want to go back to it this morning uh, with the message entitled, not rocky ground, I'm sorry, the thorny ground, with a message entitled, the soil doesn't care. And it doesn't really matter. Whatever you sow into soil, it doesn't matter what type of seed it is. The soil doesn't care. The, the soil is just going to make that seed produce, and that's what we'll deal with today. So this is Jesus's explanation of the parable of the sower. And he's given this explanation to his disciples in Mark chapter four. Jesus said the farmer is like someone who plants God's teaching down inside of people. Now, sometimes the seed falls along the path. And that's like the people who hear the teaching of God, but they don't understand it. And because their understanding is unfruitful, then Satan comes immediately and snatches away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, other people, like the seed that's planted on rocky ground. Now they hear the teaching and they quickly and gladly accept it, but they only have a little layer of soil because they have all this rock. And because of that, they don't allow the word of God to go deep into their lives. Uh, so they keep it only for a short time. As soon as trouble comes or persecution comes because of the word, then they quickly give up. Now other people are like seed that's planted amongst the thorny ground or thorny weeds. Now these people, they hear the teaching. This is what we're dealing with today. They hear the teaching but their lives become full of other things. That's the, that's the problem. What, what are the other things? Jesus says, well, like the cares of this world, the love of money, and uh, everything else that they want. So this keeps the word from growing and it doesn't produce a harvest in their lives. And then lastly, other people are like seed that's planted on good ground and they hear the teaching, they accept it, and then it starts to grow and it produces in their lives. Now, sometimes 30 times more, sometimes 60 times more, and even sometimes 100 times more. Once again, we've been dealing with this thorny ground, that third type of soil, for a while. And, uh, and really, today I want to go back to where Jesus said, the problem is with these people, is that they get the word, uh, the word is in their heart, but then their life, their lives become full of other things. <laughs> full of other things, like the kids of this world, the love of money, uh, the deceitfulness of riches, the King James Version says, or everything else they want. They have lust for other things. Their lives are just full of other things. In other words, Jesus was giving us a picture of the word being sown into their hearts, but then other seed being sown into their hearts as well. So now in their heart, you have the word seed, and then you have other seed that's sown into their hearts, and you have all this competing seeds. So now this is a message really about competing priorities. Jesus is saying, if you sow all this other stuff into the soil of your heart, then the other stuff is going to grow. And this, the word is trying to grow. And now you have competing priorities. And in this case, you have way more cares of this world or lust uh, for selfish desires more than the word. And so this other stuff becomes weeds and it chokes out the word. So what does this mean to you today? Because once again, the soil doesn't care. Whatever you sow in there, that's what it's going to produce. It doesn't care. So what does this mean to you today? I have seven things to share with you. Let's get into them. Number one, if you have a beautiful orange grove, so let's say to my friends who are in Florida, right? So you may picture an orange grove. So you have this beautiful orange grove. And as far as your eyes can see, all you see is orange trees and you see oranges. Oranges are everywhere. But if you go into that orange grove, and let's say it's been orange grove for 100 years, and this seed... I mean, this soil has been producing oranges for 100 years and you take apple seed and you sow it into that soil. What do you think is going to happen? It's not like the soil is going to say, oh, ho, oh, oh, hold on. Let me reject this because it's not orange seed. I'm going to reject it because it's not oranges. No. Hey, it's not like the soil is going to say, hey, Mr. Sower, what I do is I produce oranges, not apples. So don't give me that seed. No, that's not what the seed is going to um, the soil is going to do at all. If you sow something that you didn't want, then you're going to reap a harvest of something that you would rather not have. The soil is going to cause it to produce. The, the soil is not going to uh, uh, fight back. Number two, all, the soil know, all soil knows how to do is receive seed, whatever seed you sow into it, crack open the seed, and then cause whatever is in the seed 
to produce, right? That's all the soil knows how to do. So you can't sow apple seed and then pray for oranges, even though that's what Christians do all the time. They, they do the wrong thing and then they're praying for something else. So if you're sowing apple seed and then you're praying for oranges, you're really not understanding the way this thing works. Galatians 6 and 7 says, listen, it's not even hard to understand. God is not going to be mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, sows, that's what he's going to reap. If you sow apples, you're going to reap apples. You, if you're sowing apples, but you're praying for oranges, you are going to be disappointed because the soil doesn't discriminate. The soil is going to take whatever you sow into it, crack it open, and cause it to grow. So that's the picture that Jesus has given us. So yes, Jesus says, now... The sower takes the word of God. It's the same sower and the same seed in all four scenarios. So the sower takes the word of God. Nothing wrong with the sower. The sower takes the word of God. Nothing wrong with the seed and sows it in, into this person's life. But then this person is also getting other seed, competing seed. Uh, 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 the cares of this world, the love of money, lust for everything else that they want. And so the competing seed comes in and grows and chokes out the word. Number three, if you don't like the harvest right now, listen, you look at me. If you don't like the harvest, consider your life. Consider where you are right now. If you don't like the harvest that you've been reaping, then just consider the seed you've been sowing. Number four, you cannot sow one thing and then pray for a different harvest. The only way to change your harvest is to change your seed. So if you don't like the harvest you've been reaping, check the seed and then change the seed that you've been sowing. Number five, Jesus likened your heart to soil. He then painted a picture of the soil of your heart receiving the seed of the word. Now, if left alone, then the soil of your heart is going to cause the seed of the word to produce and you will produce a harvest. You're going to receive it. However, if you choose to allow competing seed in like the cares of this world, the love of money, lust for other things then the soil of your heart is going to crack open those other seeds as well. And then your heart is going to have all this stuff growing in it. And, and what's going to happen? All this other stuff is going to overtake the word. Number six, God has sown his word in your heart. God's word will work if you allow it to work. But if your life becomes full of other things, and that's what Jesus was explaining, then those competing priorities are going to take priority over the word. And before you know it, you're going to reap a harvest. It just won't be the harvest that God wanted for you. Number seven. And finally, question, what seed are you sowing into the soil of your heart? Whatever you sow, your heart will cause to grow because the soil doesn't care. So whatever you put in there is going to crack it open. It's going to make it grow. Let's close this out with a declaration of faith. Let's speak something over our own lives because this is a word that causes us. It's a word that, that causes a certain level of introspection. So this is a word that, that at, at, when you receive a word like this, you should take self-inventory. What am I allowing into the soil of my heart? Whatever you allow through your eye gates, your eye is a gate. Whatever you allow through your eyes is getting down in your heart. Your ears are a gate. Whatever you allow through your ears is getting down in your heart. That's why you got to get the word through your eyes, the word through your ears. But if you allow other stuff, through your eyes and your ears, it's going to get down in your heart and it's going to produce a harvest. And it may not be the harvest you wanted. So let's close this out with a declaration of faith. Open up your mouth and say this. Say, Father, this is a season of refined focus for me. I bring my life into focus in 2016 by meditating and medicating on your word day and night. Your word is seed. My heart is soil. The soil of my heart is going to crack open whatever seed I sow into it. Therefore, I declare that I am careful not to sow bad seed. I carefully and prayerfully consider what I allow through my eye and ear gates. Whatever I allow in will work its way down into my heart. And my heart will cause it to produce. So I give your word first place in my life. I fill my heart with your word daily. I meditate and I medicate your word day and night. This way my life becomes full of the harvest 
you desire for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right hand side of the website and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. You probably know somebody who needs to watch this video. So just share it with them. As you head into this day, just know that your, the soil of your heart doesn't care. It's going to cause whatever you sow into it, it's going to crack it open and cause it to grow. So make sure you carefully and prayerfully consider whatever you allow in. And if you don't like the harvest you've been reaping, check the seed you've been sowing. God bless you.